The Parkinson's Podcast is brought to you by the Davis Finney Foundation and brings you the stories, wisdom, and expertise of people living with Parkinson's, care partners, and Parkinson's professionals. Additionally, we would like to thank our title podcast sponsor, AbbVie, for helping us bring this content to you. AbbVie is committed to recognizing the uniqueness and needs of each person living with Parkinson's and delivering innovative solutions for patients, care partners, and clinicians. In this episode, Dr. Anelian Oosterbahn talks about the impact of young-onset Parkinson's disease, YOP. PD on women, how women have been left out of the research for so long and that their care is impacted. She also talks about what it's like to be a gynecologist, mother of four, and have YOPD. Hello and welcome everybody. My name is Melanie Dizon. I'm the Director of Education and Content at the Davis Finney Foundation, and I'm here today with Dr. Osterbahn. How are you doing? Thank you. Thank you. I'm doing well. Thank it's you for having have you here. <laughs> and yeah. where are you? Let's tell everybody where you're calling in from. Well, I, I'm in Rotterdam, the Netherlands. So, and awesome. yeah, it's a great town. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I think it sounds fabulous. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so can you tell us a little bit about yourself, your work, your family life, sort of the, the big picture, and then we'll get into all the other juicy stuff. Yes, with pleasure. Uh, well, so thank you for inviting me today to share both my personal and professional story. So my name is Anneline and um, I'm 40 years old and a proud mother of four kids. Uh, I work as a medical doctor for like four days a week and dedicate the rest of my time uh, to my research project on the women and Parkinson's disease. Um, I got diagnosed with Parkinson's disease about seven years ago. And I think it's the combination of my it's the combination of my background in gynecology together with my own personal experience that has made yeah, me realize that I was like kind of called to do this research and be an advocate for young women with Parkinson's disease. Yeah. Yeah. So first of all, how old are your kids? The oldest one is 11. That's Philine. It's a girl. And then there are two boys at 10 and seven. And the youngest one is Josephine. She's just turned one. Okay. Yeah. Oh, that sounds fabulous. Mm -hmm. um, you, that's a busy, I mean, that alone is busy. So you uh, must yeah. be just filled up every minute of the day. Yes. Yes. That's true. And you like it <laughs> that way? And really efficiently, but uh, I manage and I like it. I really like it a lot. Yes. They give me so much energy. So yeah. 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 That's great. Okay. So yeah. can we talk a little bit about your uh, diagnosis? Like what, what prompted you to look into it, what happened first and, and what was your process like in terms of getting that official diagnosis, the care you got, all that kind of stuff? Well, it, it only took me like three months from initial science to diagnosis. And I, th it, it's, I think it's due to my profession because I did, did a lot of surgery and um, I, it started with a frozen shoulder and that really interfered with my job. So I was really keen on that. Look, yeah, diving into it. And um, I had some rigidity also in my lower left lower arm. And I believe, yeah, it was, I think it's just a combination of my medical background and my determination to find the immediate answer that ate my diagnosis so timely, but also therefore it was kind of a shocker that it came so, yeah, in like in such short no period, I got this terrible diagnosis that I really didn't expect. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. And you, so it sounds like, I mean, you don't have that sort of look back where people say, oh, I had experienced symptoms for a really long time. Yours were very sort of motor related and mm -hmm. uh, just kind of came on quickly. Yeah. And then I just, I visited, I, I, I eventually got the diagnosis Parkinson's disease, but uh, after I visited a physiotherapist, I didn't have any symptoms at all for, for a while. So I really didn't feel sick at all, but still I had this diagnosis and had to deal with it. And uh, of course I was shocked to hear these life-changing words, you have Parkinson's. And, uh, but really from day one, I felt strong and ready to fight. And um, well, up till today, I, I've been literally fighting back because I practice boxing and uh, it's a really nice thing to do. And uh, I, I exercise at least like five times a week uh, because I consider exercise as the most important form of therapy. And 
And last month, I even ran the Rotterdam Marathon, the complete marathon for the second Excellent. time. So that was really cool. Yeah. Nice. Congrats. That's yeah. great. Thank you. Did you, so when you got the diagnosis, did you start medication right away? No, not immediately. I, only after, I think after one and a half years. Okay. And it was just last time that I went to the pharmacist that I was kind of shocked that she got me like a shopper full of <laughs> boxes and I th- I was really like okay uh is it for is it for a year or so or and then she said no it's only for three months and then I was okay and so disease is progressing because you know I tend to work out a lot and I I'm almost symptom free all day but uh, still the the first time I started medication it was like one tablet a day and now it's like a lot <laughs> so a lot it oh. was kind of confrontating yeah 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 and um you say you work out five times a week you do boxing you run what are some other things that you do uh, I also play field hockey at a quite a high level still and I play golf and um, yeah actually and I uh, do a uh, biking uh, I said it's a race bike uh, yeah I, I and I just love all sports with the balls so. oh nice you do it all is there is there anything that's impacted or are you just like man no I'm feeling feeling good no I feel quite good uh, actually even with the heavy duration and like the marathon running and the the heavy boxing I think uh, and heavy lifting it's it gives me so much mental power also and keeping my strength and using my whole body I think it also really helps with your coordination and forcing me to use my Parkinson's size always the way I, I yeah describe it it's a, it's mostly I'm most impact on my left side and I tend not to use this arm but since I box and uh, I keep uh, challenging myself also like in the uh, um, things in the house I use screwdrivers with my left hand or oh, brush yeah. my teeth with my left hand I since I do that on purpose, uh, I, I noticed that it helps and I, I use it in spontaneous ways also more often. So, yeah. yeah. So what were those stuff. early days like? You had three little little kids, right? When you mm-hmm. were diagnosed because you're, you're seven yeah. years old and your third one is seven, right? What yeah. was that like? Uh, and how did you or have you told the kids? And, you know, what was that whole experience? Yeah. It was difficult in the beginning. Uh, I didn't tell them because, as I said, I didn't have that much, that many symptoms, and I just, yeah, lived a normal life. And uh, I really didn't feel sick. I still don't actually, but uh, I live with it. But I don't feel sick. But um, yes, of course, sometimes my symptoms can be annoying, and it can interfere with being feeling like a complete mother, like um, having to. Um, switch diapers with a baby turning over and over and rounds and rounds it's quite it's for a normal mother also already a challenge but for me it's really challenging so the most important thing is to stay calm and I think I still am able to live a normal life but I think it's also due to the fact that we apply lots of humor to situations like it just helps sometimes to just both poke fun of yourself or laugh about silly symptoms and look at the lighter side instead of, uh, yeah, making it feel heavy or, yeah. So before your fourth child, you said that you did a lot of research on how pregnancy might impact your symptoms and progression. So Mm -hmm. um, what did you learn and how much of that turned out to be true or false or what surprised you the most while, you know, being pregnant um, while having Parkinson's that fourth Mm -hmm. time? Well, actually, the most important thing I learned was that there's a really gigantic research gap around women and Parkinson's disease. And this is this definitely uh, accounts also for pregnancy and Parkinson's. And we all know that women have been neglected in medicine for a long time and treated like men. But we are just we are not small men and men don't get pregnant. Small so. men. <laughs> no, we're just we're not just small men and men right. don't get pregnant. So. My search just left me without proper answers. And it was said like the only thing I found uh, uh, because I was really concerned about disease progression, already having three kids to take care of. um, It was said that that 50% of women would show disease progression. But 
it was unclear uh, why and how and did it recover um did these women take medication or didn't they uh, this was not described so it was like um not finding any answers made the decision to have another baby really a difficult one and even anxious one for me and uh, yeah, i was afraid not to be able to take care of the baby uh, yeah, in case you deteriorate too much and but still we decided to go for it because yeah and sort of the lack of evidence beautiful, beautiful. lack of evidence give you yeah, a little also, bit more i i, I kind of let my physiotherapist convince me a little bit because I just ran a marathon before the last uh, baby and uh, also yeah, four years ago. And she said, well, you can run a marathon so you can also uh, 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 be pregnant again because you, you'll manage. And uh, I thought, oh, that sounds quite uh, like uh, that makes sense. So, <laughs> yeah, she she try, she kind of uh, convinced me that I could uh, could do it. But. It was, it was kind of scary. And it, even in the course of pregnancy, uh, disease did pr progress. I, I, I really got more symptoms, more tremor. Um, and my, my medication had to be doubled, like, the, like from four times a day to eight times a day. And uh, that, did yeah, that I, feel, did you feel the, the um, increase in symptoms quite early on in your pregnancy or was that a while in or later in the, in the beginning? I, yeah, I, I was vomiting a lot, so that didn't help because yeah, you just didn't take up the med medication. So that was a real challenge, but that, that was a problem in all my pregnancies so that wasn't new, but then from a week of 26 or and onwards, I think when the belly was really growing, I just didn't. Uh, manage to sleep well and I think yeah all, from from the moment I had Parkinson's disease I noticed that it's not sleeping well for having poor nights of sleep is really impactful on your symptoms so um, I think looking back the, the the progression in pregnancy was really due to feeling very fatigued and yeah poor nights of sleep and when Josephine was born she was immediately really a well sleeping baby so i slept the first night it was so great to sleep a whole <laughs> night and also i'm a belly sleeper so i got to turn on my belly and whew, I, the next morning i really felt so relieved and already i could have my dosage again it was really like a miracle <laughs> oh wow that that's yeah. a good turnaround that's that's the sign mm -hmm. of somebody very healthy going into to pregnancy mm -hmm. um was there anything else that you changed uh, medication wise or activity wise, um, during your pregnancy? Yeah, before pregnancy, I had to change my medication and that's just uh, a thing. Uh, yeah, I had to do it because of a lack of evidence. Um, the only med medicine that seems to be, um, safe is levodopa and monotherapy. So, and I, I was using primary pexel. It's a, a mm. yeah, dopamine agonist. So I, I, I had to stop and it was quite, Difficult because I already was using a high dosage, so I had to uh, have a real scheme to lower and lower that and then increase the levodopa to find a new balance. So I think it took me like two to three months to get a new uh, stable situation before I got to become pregnant. And then the levodopa was, was yeah, already from the beginning wasn't really enough. I think with the agonist, I had this like, Re, re, uh, this constant working tablet constantly working tablet all day long and the levodopa is more like fluctuating so that annoyed me a lot <laughs> already from the beginning yeah, yeah definitely so yeah. um what is some of that notable research that's out there on pregnancy and parkinson's yeah i mean obviously a gap exists but mm -hmm. what are some of the things that you feel confident now uh talking to people who want to get pregnant and have Parkinson's, what are some things that you're a little more clear on than others? Mm -hmm. Well, I think, I, and I know because I've been using so much levodopa and there, there, there are some nice reviews that summarize the data from the case reports that, that exist, that levodopa is really a safe choice in pregnancy. And I would uh, advise women not to stop their medication in, in case they really uh, do need medication. Um, I think, and I hope that we can find out in the future that the dopamine agonist is also safe. And um, 
but for now i would say there's not enough significant evidence but uh, also around um breastfeeding it's just yeah i think it would be safe to breastfeed probably but we don't know and it's uh, these are also things like many women in africa for instance uh, for instance they they um do breastfeed and we yeah it, in as we can as soon as we can get these data from these women and uh, about their children uh, we can tell more about whether breastfeeding is safe i yeah i hope to find out in the future you mean uh, with, um levodopa or you mean the dopamine yeah with lo- levodopa at, at least okay and then also the other types of medication yeah, yeah. um what else what else what what other questions do you wish you had the answer to um yeah well uh, also management protocol there are no guidelines no management protocol so i was pregnant uh, i was working in an academical medical center an academic medical center um with all yeah most um uh, knowledge but uh, around this topic we were like it was a blank so we had to make a plan uh, with the yeah it, it's really it was really difficult so we were just uh, considering things what can be a, an issue well I, I visited a anesthesiologist because some med- some like medication for nausea or other things it's better not to prescribe to a person with Parkinson's disease so we have been talking about that and it just made me feel a little bit more safe to even though we didn't have answers to do ask ourselves some questions and be prepared at least um yeah so i think it's just good to have a proper uh healthcare team around you when you in case you consider pregnancy uh people you f- if yeah you feel safe with and just have some knowledge at least about parkinson's disease and and uh, yeah, the kinds of med- medication that we, uh, that's good for us. <laughs> mm-hmm. And yeah. so you said that you did notice progression. Did that stick with you after the baby was born? Did you feel like, oh, it was just like an increase in symptoms, but that sort of went away after, or did it feel like, wow, you kind of progressed a couple of years in those? No, that's so I'm happy that didn't happen. Uh, because at the end of pregnancy, I was really afraid. I thought, if this is going to be the new status, uh, it, it really has progressed a lot. Then, uh, no, yeah, the, I was really, really anxious about about that. But then after delivery, it really, I, I told, as I told you, after one night already, I felt much better. But then from two weeks uh, after Josephine was born, I started to work out already. It's a little bit early, but I was really determined to become fit again and i think i'm i feel more uh fit, physically more fit than before pregnancy actually at this moment wow so no yeah and that's also why i ran the marathon or uh, i wanted to do this this year again because i know when i have such a an event in the future i have to train a lot and i know how well i good it made me feel like four years ago so i just wanted to achieve that again and yeah, I made I made it. So, yeah. Yeah. So what do you think that, uh, well, what is your, um, I don't know how much you know about the medical system in the U S or, mm-hmm. but w- what do you think that movement, even movement disorder specialists sort of get wrong about women and pregnancy? Well, I think many, many doctors or healthcare providers around people with Parkinson's are afraid of pregnancy and the combination of pregnancy Parkinson's disease just because they don't know. Uh, Do they tend to err on the side of like, ooh, I don't think you should get pregnant? Yeah, that's what I hear. Uh, Like uh, I'm on all these social media, like Facebook groups and all that. And I I, I tend to hear, um, um, yeah, some women uh, speak about their uh, their doctor telling them not to become pregnant or advise them not to, or family members telling them not to, or the... But I think that's really sad because a child wish is really a, a deep wish, and it's so beautiful to have children. And I, yeah, especially after my last experience, yeah, I think if we should not tell women they cannot have a baby with Parkinson's disease. And right. of course, we need more data and more information in the future. But there's also no evidence that it's harmful. 
um of course uh, being a woman yourself you need to feel confident and uh, yeah feel, yeah it's your own decision but uh, yeah i hope really w- women in the future can make a more uh, informed decision than i did had yeah. to take. i mean it sounds like we could use some um you know extra training for movement disorder specialists around women and and uh yes parkinson's and getting that fellowship or something yeah right? Yes, yeah, I also did a survey in the Netherlands about this topic around, among women from between 20 and 60 concerning all life stages and hormonal in, impact on the Parkinson's symptoms. And uh, I hope to get a paper out really soon about, concerning this topic and also yeah, add some uh, uh, things around women and Parkinson's in guidelines um yeah and we will, we will start with some expert opinions and then we start we will uh, get this uh, movement forward but right. there, yeah there are more and more um researchers in the world um doing uh yeah working on this topic uh, more yeah. and more so it's uh yeah that's good what about um women in menopause women with parkinson's around menopause what what have you found um what, what's happening in the research there yeah, that's also a really difficult topic. Um, everything that has been written up to today is really contradictory. That all the one study says the one thing and the other says the other thing. And, uh, yeah, of course, just thinking clear, um, logically, you would say, of course, a perimenopause, menopause is impactful for a woman. Everything uh, that's impactful on your phys- physical condition, like even having a flu, impacts our Parkinson's disease symptoms and the effectivity of our medication. This, of course, go through menopause is really impactful on your Parkinson's disease. But what to do about it? That's just not unknown. But I think that shouldn't say that women should not ask the questions, and they, they should ask their healthcare providers and tell them about their symptoms and the, these influences and. We should just learn from that. Even being heard or getting acknowledgement or uh, hearing uh, 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 other women uh, suffer from this too, that already helps. But I think maybe we should uh, treat it with like hormonal uh, uh, replacement therapy instead of more levodopa or things like that. But it has all has not been done yet. So it's yeah, really so there's a no there's no. There's no studies or evidence on hormone. No, no, because there has hormone no replacement therapy has been uh, prescribed to women with Parkinson's, but um, all in uh, other stages of the perimenopause, all with different durations, all with different dosages. So it and there's so such small numbers. And so we need a really international collaborations and clinical trials to test this out. Yeah. Why is it so hard to get this done? Yeah, I I think because we have just really been neglected in clinical trials up to trials up till today, and the 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 topic of women's issues in in particular in whole the whole uh, me- medical field uh, is just from a couple of years ago beginning to get under the attention of research. I don't know because they were all men, or <laughs> it's really the me- me- men dominated world, but now women stand up for themselves and. Uh, I don't know. It's just uh, we started a battle and we are going to win. <laughs> yes. Um, did you have any experience or have had you have you had experience with people, women with pregnancy and DBS? Um, no, I don't know women that uh, that underwent DBS and, and pregnancy as well. Uh, no, I don't know. I when think you- it will happen much more in the future because DBS Finally, also in the Netherlands, uh, can be done without uh, or, or under general anesthetics, because that was made women really afraid of the procedure. So I think, uh, and also with the increasing age, maternal age, uh, we and the increase of the disease uh, incidence, we will see much more in the future. Yeah, yeah we have to. Uh, yeah, with the pregnancy registry, we can uh, follow up these women. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's a great segue. So what is PregSpark and, yes. and how did you get involved with it? Yes. Yeah, so PregSpark <laughs> is the uh, international registry for pregnancy and Parkinson's disease. 
um, it's my baby. <laughs> uh, I, I wanted to finish it earlier, but I've been working on it for years now um, because the idea, the idea already started uh, before when I was looking into literature and found there was nothing. Um, but it's it's a registry. Um, all women around the world who become pregnant and have a PD diagnosis can enroll at our website, uh, prexpark.com. Uh, it's from pregnancy and the spark of Parkinson's, of course. Um, and uh, the website is almost finished. Uh, women will receive questionnaires like every trimester of pregnancy and after delivery. Um, we will gather information around their general health, PD diagnosis, medication use, pregnancy outcome, of course, but also uh, their well-being, um, uh, being anxious or not, uh, how, the physical activity, like all the things I wanted to know about, uh, but didn't learn, get to learn. And um, of course, it, it can be the questionnaires will be extensive, so we will not uh, demand them to fill up every question. So there will be a obligatory questions and some they can just leave open if they want uh, and people, uh, women can uh, enroll from the beginning of pregnancy up to eight way eight weeks postpartum so if they only hear about prex park after delivery it's not a problem uh, but uh, it, we will end inclusion uh, eight weeks postpartum because the most important data for me uh, is still the data from pregnancy outcome that uh, how, yeah the child how is the child doing and, and all the questions about their medication, they can tell me afterwards as well. But I, I would most be most happy if women um, enroll in the beginning of pregnancy. Yeah. yeah. yeah and follow up will be up to one to two years postpartum because you also want to know what I want to know, of course, how is the mother also doing one year or two years later? How is the progression? Did it stay or what, did she become... Uh, yeah, in her or old status again, and also the children. How do they? Because and immediately after delivery, okay, they were fine. But how about later on? It's also important for mothers to yeah, know, or parents. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, that's exciting. Not to learn. So I wanted that it will be an ongoing, continuous, uh, prospective registry, and uh, yeah, I'm really happy that we could make it happen. Yeah. Yeah. And then from there, hope to do, you know, like get some funding for clinical trials and that kind of thing. Yeah. Have all yeah. This data. But it's se separate from the Brex Park, it's really only about the pregnancy. It's, but yeah, of yeah. course, my women MPD uh, research line will uh, will try to um, collaborate internationally on clinical trials among that topic. But this is really only about the uh, pregnancy. And we want to uh, eventually, with the data, we will. Uh, get get management guidelines out there yeah and information for women they really need yeah that's great yeah. Um, yeah. is there anything that uh, you want to talk about that I haven't asked about no I don't think so <laughs> okay I think, I think we got it covered it. okay good <laughs> well uh the work you're doing is so important and uh like you said there's uh this isn't going anywhere so there's going to be a lot of women that are going through this and wondering, you know, getting diagnosed earlier and still wanting mm -hmm. to have kids. And yes, it's great that you're, um, you know, as an example, and also just pushing the research forward so that mm -hmm. um, down the line, people can feel even more comfortable. Yeah. I just it. wished I could, I could help all these women. Sometimes I think I need a, a, like a video consulting online for women. So maybe, maybe on PrexPark, the website, I will create like some, some, just consulting moments for groups women just can can enroll and uh, just ask me questions because yeah I'm one of yeah I think it's there are not many gynecologists in the world that know something about pregnancy or women's issues and also about Parkinson's just uh from also a doctor's perspective but also the patient's perspective and, yeah, and uh, I mean I would just think the in any situation like the fear uncertainty unknowns mm -hmm. is like it's already huge, right? And yeah. add to the fact that you don't know if you're doing something wrong to yourself or wrong to the baby. And that's a mm -hmm. really tough decision. So yeah, um, that's a really important thing. It would be great to have for people. And mo most people are like the, the, the partner or the family. Most people are worried about the baby, but I was 
really maybe it's, uh, I, I, it's selfish but I was really worried about myself actually yeah. that was a topic that was really not spo- we didn't speak about it but for me it was like yeah but what about me I don't want to really progress that much and be physically incapable of taking care of my child and then I have a healthy baby but right yeah yeah and like you said you you are dealing with all of the other people in your life mm-hmm. that have an opinion don't do it we can't do it you want to do it you shouldn't do it you should do it yeah, yeah people have lots of opinions it's right? also when you you have a diagnosis like this people also tend to feel like they can just spread their their um me the, how to say that the, what they think yeah. uh, on you to uh, well I am just a mature woman and I can make my own decisions like it's not like and oh, they do the same see. thing when you're oh. pregnant too right like when people yes. get pregnant even without Parkinson's they tell you all the things you should yeah, do, you should should do, do that. and you shouldn't do yeah just, uh, no, we're just all grown-ups and uh, right. <laughs> yeah we have our own ideas. yeah yeah. Yeah. So we managed. <laughs> well, thank you so I'm much. Really happy I did. I I got pregnant because Josephine is really the most Aww. happy baby that I. Yeah. She's always smiling. She's oh, like really nice. my dopamine, uh, my secret extra dopamine <laughs> pill. I, I I take every day. Yeah. Oh, that's sweet. Yeah. Polly and I are always looking at pictures of uh, you and the babies and throwing. Yeah. So that's a, that's I great. She's so happy. But the other kids are also so nice. Uh, it's sweet to her, helping out, and we just have so much fun together. Yeah. Well, that's I hope great. it stays that way for a long time. Yeah. Well, yeah. thank you so much for doing this today. I really appreciate it, and mm-hmm. I know our community is gonna appreciate it too. Thank you for joining us for this episode of the Parkinson's Podcast. For more information about the Davis Finney Foundation and to learn about educational offerings and community events for people affected by Parkinson's, please visit davisfinneyfoundation.org or dpf.org.